probably the first time you enter an igloo you thought, wow, this is so boring. But surely, everything changed when you discovered the secret room. Some long stairs that take you to a strange stone room. But why did Mojang got igloos? And whose place was this? For this reason, igloos exist. Welcome back to Bobbycraft. But in English! The first thing you need to know is that the villager zombies can be cured using a weakness potion and a golden apple. These zombies can take between 3 and 5 minutes to return to the normally. This helps us in case of a zombie apocalypse. You can recover the villagers that turn into zombies, but curing the zombie villagers not only serves to bring them back to life. Well, once we rescue him, we can get discount. But if you zombify the villager that you already healed, he can get even more discounts. Double heal some zombies will get their maximum discount in a just single emerald, and those have exaggerately cheap traits. But I want to ask you something, where did you learn to heal a zombie? In my case, I learned it thanks to YouTube, and I'm sure many of you do too. Another common way to learn this mechanic is by learning from web pages like Wikipedia. But what if you don't have access to Wikipedia or any YouTube videos? How players could learn how to heal a zombie? Our recipe book says absolutely nothing, and it's because of this problem that most Mojang invented igloos. The secret room of the igloos give us some clues of how to cure a zombie, and this sign with arrows is the clearest clue. The sign tells us that the villagers can turn into zombies and that the zombies can turn back in villagers. And that's not all. In these igloos we can find potion of weakness, and in the chest you will always find a gun with golden apple. Having these clear clues, I think it is obvious how we can cure a zombie. However, that is not all, because the igloos hide a story behind. The first thing we have to know is that these igloos are not the only ones in the game. If we analyze the snowy villages, we will find that they also have igloos. In these small snow constructions, they have a table, a chair, some lining, and also a bed. And there are several types, for example, this one with a furnace and a lamp. Others have a small backyard. Others have chests, and others are made entirely of blue ice and compact ice. Seeing the similarities in terms of igloos, this gives chance that snow villagers have made these structures. This seems quite convincing, but there is a problem with this theory. If we analyze igloo blocks with a secret room, we can find normal lights. There are two little windows of ice, and as you can see, the villages don't have this type of Ice. They only use compact ice and blue ice, so this civilization of villagers doesn't use normal ice anywhere. Also, the glues are usually very different. As incredible as it may seem, the snow villagers are not related with the glues. But then, who is responsible for these structures? Well, there are many important details in the secret room. And one of the most important things is the cactus that we can find on the table. Just think about it in detail. What does a cactus do in completely frozen and cold biomes? These cactus tell us several things, such as that the stray couldn't be responsible in any way. These mobs only appear in cold biomes. It wouldn't make sense that they could reach the deserts at some point. For obvious reason, the snow golem couldn't have been either. That makes us think that perhaps it was a person who liked to travel and who at some point passed through a desert. If we talk about explorers, the first that comes to mind is a wandering trader. Since these villagers are known to explore the whole world, we can also trade cacti with them. A very important fact because it indicates that these villagers have been in the desert. But unfortunately, the wandering traders couldn't be responsible for the glues because they are hawkers. They shouldn't have a place to stay. What's the point of building all this structure if you're not going to live in it? Wandering traders don't have a house specifically. They spend their time traveling. They don't need a structure to protect themselves from the night either because these villagers drink an invisibility potion at night so the zombies will never find them. So for now, the most likely would be a desert villager. Well, these villagers usually decorate with cactus. Yes, it is probable. But let's continue analyzing the details of the secret room. In this area, we can also find a cauldron and a shelf of potions. And which Minecraft mob has cauldrons of water and can make potions? One of these mobs can be the witch. The witches are experts in alchemy. Not for a reason, they always attack with potions. Curiously, they can attack us with harming, with potion, with weakness, and also their houses contain a cauldron. But there is a problem here. The witches couldn't be responsible for the glues. Yes, they have cauldrons, but there is no potion shelf. That means that witches don't need potion shelves. Somehow, they have found a way to make potions without this item. In fact, 
everything seems to be that the witch's potions are made with magic. Every second, have a 1% chance of emitting purple particles. These particles do nothing but indicate that they have some kind of magic. Also, it doesn't make sense that the witches want to heal the villagers. The witches are enemies of the villagers. They want to kill them, not to heal them. And this can be seen in pillagers' right. But then, what other Minecraft mob knows how to use a potion shelf? These are the cleric villagers. And there are several proofs that a cleric villager was the owner of the glues. Not only do they know how to use the shelves, it can be seen that the villagers clearly have knowledge of cauldrons. In addition to all the Minecraft species who would be more interested in reversing the zombification. Well, obviously the villagers. This was like the pandemic that we experienced. The virus mainly affects human beings. And who were the most interested in discovering a cure for this? Well, obviously human beings. This gives us a hint that a cleric villager wants wanted to find a cure to zombification and decided to make this whole room secret so no one will discover it and to be obviously safe. This cleric villager would have even installed some small rooks at the bottom for a sleep on the ground. This cleric villager would have even installed some small rooks at the bottom for a sleep on the ground and not rest until he find a cure. Another proof that a cleric villager was the builder of this base is that chest we can find emerald some occasions. A totally normal item for villager. This cleric villager possibly was a traveler and that could be the justification for the cactus. This villager would spend a lot of time through the Minecraft biome until he found materials for his cure. How to find sugarcane, mushrooms, to be able to make his potions, possibly he will have found and the fermented spider eye. And in one of his adventures, he will have gone through a desert to get cacti. And who knows, maybe it was in the desert adventure where he found gold for his golden apples. But there is something quite disturbing about this village. Why would a villager be able to lock one of his friends behind bars without no way out? It obviously doesn't make sense. So possibly, this cleric only went looking for zombie villagers. And before there was absolutely no one in these drawers, once he brought the zombies for his experiments, he would manage to capture the zombie villagers after several experiments that can be seen thanks to the fact that the cauldron is a bit empty. This villager was able to heal the first zombie, and eventually, this zombie would become the villager that we can select in this secret room. Now, pay attention to the entrance of these igloos. There are no doors. Why wouldn't there be a door? We have seen that all the villager houses have doors to protect themselves. This could indicate that just when he found the villager's cure, a zombie invasion has probably happened. In fact, we can see that in zombie villages, all the villagers' houses don't have doors, because they have been destroyed by the zombies. The villager realized that the zombies were coming. Obviously, he wouldn't have time to save his friend, so the only thing that he could do was place a sign to indicate the cure, with the hope that someone else could find it. We don't know what happened to the villager who was looking for the cure. Possibly he fled, or maybe he died. A lot of time will have passed after the tragedy, making the holy glue turn into broken mossy bricks. A justification for why there are co-ops on this side. All zombie attacks suffer from cowards afterwards and blocks deteriorate. And this is one of the main igloos theories. But there is still a question. Why are there so many igloos with the same thing? This is just a gameplay decision. If there was only one igloo in a survival world, it would be too boring. These things don't affect the story. At the end of the day, we have to remember that Minecraft is a game and many of the decisions are just for be fun. Not necessary, everything has to be history. That's why there are so many igloos in Minecraft just because it's a game. But then, why are there igloos that don't have secret rooms? Like this one here, there's nothing. The answer is the same, this doesn't affect the story. It's just a gameplay decision, because you have to remember that they are to check. You have a potion shell, you have free apples, potions, free villager, and obviously this has to be balanced. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. On the left, you have an interesting video about the spawners, and on the right, you have a video suggested by the YouTube algorithm.